Hey y'all, what if God's direction is correction? What if he doesn't heal you? What if he doesn't give you that new car? What if he doesn't give you that job? What if it just, you know, let's kind of go on and on, guys. Are you still going to serve him? A little brutal, I get it. You know, we all have to, there's things we all have to go through. So right now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. It's out of Ephesians, because I always pray about things, and that's a scripture the Lord gave me. There's many of them. The, the Second Chronicles 7, 14, you know, three years ago, look it up on my YouTube. There's a message out about that, that very same scripture. Now, it's kind of like the go-to scripture for a lot of people. But we've got to turn. I'm going to tell you a little bit about some direction. We were in, it was 2017, and I'm in prayer and I'll get some random cities. I got a whole bunch of them right now. But we went to quite a few of them. All the way to Pennsylvania for one, 2,200 miles. 2,100 miles, a long way, long journey. 14, um, like 12, 14 days we drove and long story. But we went, I didn't have much to go on. Just to go. Well, one of the trips was a town called Normal, Illinois. And, you know, I'm going to actually put out a book on some of these, but it was just a really cool journey. A lot of cool things transpired. But I was just sitting in prayer, and the Lord said, I want you to go to Normal, Illinois. Well, fast forward it to today. My wife's watching a show called Hoovy about a young boy that had cancer, and his family lost everything. The farm, the, the dad tried to work to get two or three jobs and just... They just couldn't do it because of the medical. They didn't lose their trust and faith in God, though. So, my wife's like, man, we ate the restaurant we ate at. They showed downtown, and it was. It was a really cool journey. Some things happened on it. I too long to share. But... We were in normal Illinois, we were in Illinois, we were coming back. We ended up driving all the way. We spent the night in a different part of Illinois the next day after we left from there. And we ended up driving and driving and driving. I'm saying this for a point because this is part of my direction. That's correction. And I was in prayer and the Lord said, <laughs> it's not... He said, go by, go through Little Rock, Arkansas. Like, Man, Lord, we came up a whole different way up to Oklahoma. <laughs> That's okay. So he said, and I was praying, he said, it's not the direction, it's the destiny. It's the journey. Enjoy the journey. Okay, God. Something happened. Two things happened. One was correction, the part about correction. One was about direction. I mean, it was just, God, it's pretty multifaceted, guys. So, we go through Little Rock. You know, it was about an eight-hour journey from where we were at. Nine hours, maybe. And it was five o'clock in the afternoon, and it was getting to be dinner time. And I was like, what are we supposed to do? I'm like, I don't know. It's the direction the Lord told me to go. And I'm just like, I don't want to, she's like, should we stop and eat? I'm like, you know, I'm supposed to go to a restaurant. I'm supposed to, pray, you know, pray for somebody. What are we supposed to do? Like, I don't know. We're just supposed to go through Little Rock on the way home. It's five o'clock. Little Rock's not that big of a town, but big enough. And I was like, man, I don't want to stop. And, you know, it's five o'clock. And it was, I think it was a Friday, actually, but... <laughs> 
I was like, I don't want to stop and take two hours to go to a restaurant to eat. You know, it might not be good. And I just, man, I want to get, you know, I want to get to where we're going. I didn't know we were going to go all the way home, but that night, but we were. But so I just we kept driving. So we ate a little bit outside of there. And the next thing I know, we're in Texarkana. And uh, my wife's like, We, we were just driving along, and all of a sudden, we're on 30. There's two things, two, several things that happened in this, but this was the correction part <clears throat> and the direction. We're, we had our GPS on, you know, but we weren't, you know, we were on Highway 30. It goes through Arkansas, and we live up about two miles, three miles off of 30 in Dallas. And so, you know, 30, it's just, man, it's just interstate. It's the way home. Not no, just go. Drive 70 and get there, you know? Um, so, we're driving along and all of a sudden the GPS comes on and says, take exit FM, some goofy street, country road. And I looked at my wife and she looked at me and they're like, well, 30s, you know, we're on 30. We're homebound. She's like, She's like, uh, I'm the same way. She's like, well, let's just ignore it. I'm like, yeah, let's just ignore it. I said the same thing. It's just, it's wrong. And then we got about a half mile up the road and there was a 20 mile wreck. We've been hours of waiting, literally. I mean, the cars were stopped. So I pulled off to the shoulder of the road because I saw an exit about another half mile up. Cars are looking at me like I'm crazy, but... <clears throat> Got off, and we followed the GPS. And that's when we started seeing this wreck, you know, but we were going through these country podunk little who knows what roads, you know, but we just followed the GPS. We didn't listen to the GPS. God's got a GPS. God promised his son. God's plan was salvation. God promised, you know, the Holy Ghost lead, guide, and direct us to all truths. Sometimes it's direction. If we don't follow it, it turns into correction. Or are you going to take it? We don't turn, guys. That's part of the correction. To turn from our wicked ways. Humble ourselves. We're not doing it, guys. As a nation, we're too busy trying to say we're this, you know, God bless America nation. Hey, guys. If we don't turn, turn this around, there isn't a nation to be had. We're going to be a captive people. I'm just telling you guys, this is a very blunt warning. I get it. I'm not the doom and gloom guy because the Bible also says, think on these things which are pure, lovely, and holy, and acceptable. Everybody wants to hear the warm, fuzzy feeling messages. Time to get on your knees and ask for direction. And even if it comes in the form of correction, because it also says, he that those that he loves, he chastises. There's, it's always unto something with God. Jesus, the Holy Ghost, his word. He's always got a plan. Look at the cross. A perfect example. Enemy had the crowd yelling, screaming. Even the worldly governor. What are you guys talking about? You're nuts. This is one of yours. When, you know, I'm just wa wash my hands. Why do you want to kill this guy? <clears throat> Devil thought he had it. God's plan was his son. So, take correction if it's part of the direction. Because right now, it's, you know, we got to make a U-turn as a nation. But, so, anyhow, let me end with this. So, this was not the direction. It was the destiny. It was the destiny. It was where we were going to go. It was the journey. So we're in Little Rock, got through this wreck. My wife finds a hotel. She liked to do that while we we're on these trips and she'd found one and she's like, it's like eight o'clock at night by now. Man, I'm tired. I've just drove about, you know, almost 11, 12 hours. I just want to go someplace and eat and rest. Get a little something to eat and rest. We'd already ate dinner, but I just wanted to, you know, get a little something to eat and just lay down and get some rest. I was exhausted. It was a long journey. 
that wasn't as long as the one in Pennsylvania, but it's still a long journey, long day driving. <laughs> My wife looks at me and she says, "You know what? We're in little. We're in a uh, Texarkana now." And I'm like, "Okay, it's, like, it's only a couple hours home, you know." All right, she said, "I'll drive." I'm like, "Well, you don't drive that good at night, neither do I now, because some cataracts." But you know, it, it was like and she needed glasses and she didn't have them. With her and I was like okay but you know are you sure okay she said yeah yeah that's um you know three hours I'll get us home there in about two I'm like well I bet you will you got you know 16 speeding tickets not 16 but a bunch of them she couldn't even you know she'd take defensive drive she couldn't take it anymore for a while I'm like yeah I know you got the lead foot okay I'm just gonna you know so I look over she's going 90 you know I'm like honey slow down you know Okay, okay. I'll look over a hundred. I'm like, honey, slow down. You're gonna get a ticket. You can't afford another ticket. They're gonna jack up our insurance just because of it because you got so many tickets. They already kind of did a little bit, you know, and it's like, you know, I'm not, God wasn't on my mind at the time. I was just like aggravated and I was like, Finally, I just rolled my, she wouldn't slow down. I was like, she'd slow down, she'd speed back up and slow down. It was like, finally, I looked, I looked over at her and I just kind of rolled my eyes a little bit. And I said, God, it's your, it's your child. You handle it. I'm going to sleep. And I did. Now I get the honey poke. Honey. We're getting pulled over. What? I told you to slow down. I'm mad and aggravated and sleep and tired and just, you know, almost wasn't saved at the time. <laughs> so we get pulled over. County Sheriff, Humble, Texas. Imagine that. Even the name. Part of the journey. It's 11 o'clock at night. 60 miles outside of Dallas or something like that. I'm never going to be there again, probably. I mean, there's no real, real, no, no real reason to go there unless, you know, so. But that county sheriff, young guy, maybe in his late 20s, man, he grilled my wife, pulled up her record, harassed her. He's like, yeah, well, he said, you know, how fast are you going? Well, yeah. And she said, and he said, no, that's before you saw me. He said, I clocked it, you know. Almost 20 miles an hour with the speed limit. <clears throat> Big ticket, probably. She was, you know, trying to talk her way out of it, and she was kind of in tears, you know, because the guy was just grilling her. The young man was just grilling her. Well, that's probably why, you know, is that could it be, you know, he just, he knew he had already pulled up a record. <clears throat> said, where were you folks going, coming from? told him, I said, well, we're, you know, street preacher, we're on a mission. I thought it was to go to normal Illinois, and we did. And I uh, just looked at, you know, my wife, and looked at me, he said, you know what? He said, most state troopers, frankly, wouldn't give a darn. He said, but I'm a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. Bing, that was my sign. I ministered to the guy for about 15 minutes. Got out of the car, talked to him. Gave him the first book that I wrote. Just talked to him about Jesus, ministered to him. And then we left. Well, I never would have been there to minister. You know, I don't know why, but that was part of the destination. I didn't see it. So same thing, what I'm saying is, you know, we were, I would have never been there. God's always up to something. So even all this mess, guys, but it's been a mess. It's been a sinful, we've been a sinful land. Many say we were Babylon. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, it was on the internet. It showed, I think it was San Francisco Bay, but the tons of ships. Man, guys, all we do is consume. I live in a big town, a big town, Dallas, every corner as either a church or shopping center. 
and you'll get to the shopping center. There's four convenience stores, and you'll pass that shopping center. You'll pass the shopping center right next to it, and there's one right behind it, and behind it, and behind it, and behind it. It's like, how many, how many dry cleaners do you need? <clears throat> Phone stores are just, man, look at what we're doing, guys. <clears throat> we definitely have to turn back to him. And there's some correction coming. But it's unto something. So I'm not saying that we should just take, you know, nowadays if you spank your kids, you're like, man, you know, they probably want to throw you in prison for the rest of your life. I'm not saying we should take the chastisement gleefully. Sometimes it hurts. That pruning hurts. But we should take it and realize what God's trying to do. He wants his people to turn, turn back to him. He didn't want, he didn't want us to have, go through all these complications. If he did, why would the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden, and they didn't have to do anything, but one thing that he asked them to listen to, and they didn't follow directions and then came the correction. We haven't been following directions, guys, as a country, as a nation. Oh, yeah, we give, we do this, we put in God, we trust on the dollar bill. No, we don't. Most of us don't. We trust in that money. That's all it's about, guys, money and power right now. Pretty blatant, and it's just in your face. So, we're praying for direction. What if it's correction? A lot of times that's direction. Any of y'all that have kids know what I'm exactly what I'm talking about. And if you raise more than one, you know, I mean, uh, I see it all the time. I saw it in our family too, you know, the oldest one, you know, by the time you get to the second, third kid, it's just, you know, just, just different. You learned a little bit and usually you're a little bit older and a little bit wiser and it's just, you know, it's just part of our journey, guys. But right now, we're being directed and corrected. I'm not talking about politically correct. I'm not talking about this crazy, goofy, awake church. Man, we should have never been asleep to begin with. Don't hand me that baloney. That's hogwash. A lot of it is. You know it. What I'm telling you is get up at 5 in the morning when it's quiet and you don't have your internet on and you don't have your YouTube on you don't have Facebook, which has become, you know, and TikTok. That's demonic, guys. It's become demonic because it's run by, run by, because we're living in the enemy's camp and we're living in, it's a world of sin. What do we expect? He wants us to turn from our wicked ways, humble ourselves. That's pretty hard for Americans to do. You think we're better than everybody else. You got it honestly. But it's an attitude. A mindset. Why is that in Ephesians about the husband being the head? Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. We thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But he took on the form of a servant, a bond servant, even unto death. Come on, guys. Way more to this. There's a friend of mine, David J. Akron, and I've known him probably for 25 years, and I've seen his life. <laughs> we've been over to his house more than once, you know, for dinner. Just, I mean, we've been friends a long time, but, you know, we don't see him oft, often as we probably would like to, but I haven't seen him in a while, actually. Um, <clears throat> but <clears throat> he's a very intelligent guy. <clears throat> really, extremely intelligent. Like a software engineer kind of guy. Very smart. But that's how he looks at the Bible. And that's why I repost his stuff. Because he goes through it very detailed. Me, I'm Larry the Cable Guy. I'm just going to get it out. And, you know, we all have a role. So I call them mantles, though. But me, I'm, you know, more simple and kind of, you know, that's why I deal in the realm of a lot of homeless people. Because it's just real simple, blunt, common people. And he's can, he deals with common people too, but just a really, really 
educated, knowledgeable guy about the Bible. And so we need all that, guys. We need everything we can do. This is all hands on deck. Love you guys. That <clears throat> been on Facebook for a while. It's time to, you know, we think it's a cruise ship. It's time to turn this, you know, worship mob garbage stuff into a warship, battleship. Not a cruise ship where angels are going to, you've seen the pictures, the big fat angels feeding you grapes. <laughs> One of my favorite songs, but what if, what if it's, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He has trampled out the vineyard. I like what I like about that song is one of the one of the, toward the, the, the if you read the older version of it, in the very towards the very end it said, "In the lilies of the valley, Christ was born across the sea. As He died to make men holy, let us die to make men free." <clears throat> I just like that song. But what if that's coming, guys? Nobody wants to hear that. Everybody, like I said, you want the warm, fuzzy feeling messages. Well, they may not be here today. Love you guys. Pray about it. Before you throw me under the bus on this one. Just pray about it. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.